Hello, welcome back to Bitcoin Beats, Ways to the Draw. Hope you're all having a fantastic weekend so far, guys. My name is Hamilton. I'm going to I'm gonna be walking you through the Bitcoin markets today, okay? We have a lot to talk about, so let's just get straight into this. We're going to be going through the short term for Bitcoin, the mid term for Bitcoin, the long term for old Bitty here, and my level by level strategy and how we just missed an entry here, just unfortunate, but it is what it is. And again, we've still got a girthy, girthy plan ahead for the next year. So it's all good. Okay, it's all good. And we're also going to be going through the Fibonacci rings at the end in a little bit more detail here. And just what kind of correlations I found throughout this kind of nuke madness, I would say, right? So Without further ado, let's start with what has happened here in the Bitcoin market. So yesterday, as I talked about, the breakout machine got us in a short here, right? We went all the way down. This is like up 20% when we were down here, which is pretty good. Um, but again, I was expecting this to basically be a stop out. And I was correcting that in the fact that we basically just completely recovered from there, right? We rode it all the way up. We tested the 55 and then we just grinded through. And I did say as well, guys, that I was looking for a long around here at 18.2, right? Uh, unfortunately here, this was not the candle we wanted, okay? This is actually a, an awful candle, to say the least, just based on the fact that uh, it starts underneath all these moving averages and just smashes straight through them in one hour, right? So in terms of uh, what's happened here is this is a dirty candle. This is a dirty, unhealthy candle, and I would expect it to be reversed uh, by the end of the weekend, right? That that's bringing me to predictions. Obviously, that might not happen, but this is not healthy enough for me to uh, to be uh, to be actually trading this and getting it along just yet. Okay. Uh, typically, if you break through moving averages like this in one candle, uh, you can expect to grind back through them over time. Okay. So, especially as well, we've got CME as well. Just in, in just rounding up what's happened here, right? Uh, CME has closed at eighteen one fifteen. Okay, as you can see on the right hand side of the screen here. Um, 18,115. So wherever we end this weekend, uh, there's potentially going to be a gap or uh, if they don't want to have a gap here, then uh, they're obviously going to have to bring price action back down here. And that's why I do think there's potential here for a reversal to the downside before continuation towards the upside coming into next week. OK, uh, and that kind of brings me to predictions here, even though I pretty much just predicted. But <laughs> but uh, yeah, in terms of predictions here. It's all good. And yeah, we did get stopped out here on the breakout machine just to uh, just to clarify that. And again, it's not really a problem, guys. I told you guys that 50% uh, of these trades are profitable here. You can see the profit graph on the right hand side here. Oh, that's not the right uh, thing. Let me let me get this thing. Let me get this thing. Where are we at? Window capture. There we go. Yeah. So we've got our profit chart here, right? As you can see, um, over longer periods of time, it makes money. We are kind of at this point where we've hit an all time high for profit with this strategy uh, over uh, this year since April. Right. Uh, and I'm kind of expecting something uh, a little bit like we had here. Right. So uh, we break out. We have uh, a few trades in a row, which are really, really good. OK. And then we have a drawdown period. Uh, and then we eventually grind through and make another all time high in terms of the profit strategy, right? Uh, I did just want to clarify that with the breakout machine because it does work over time. It's made a hell of a lot of money this year and way more years with years before that as well, right? So I'm happy, especially in a sideways area for a quick stop loss here uh, and then no more troubles there, okay? So again, guys, uh, this isn't like detrimental. This isn't a, a bad situation here. I've actually screwed this up a bit. Hang on one second. Um, let me drag this down and not show all of my details here and then we'll get into the predictions there we go cool saturday guys we are chilling today okay so this might be a bit of a slower chilled out video okay but uh at the end of the day guys we're here for the girthy gains all right we're not here to to mess around so let's let's talk about some predictions here okay predictions on this kind of scale is we can see that there is potentially uh, a channel here that we are in towards the downside as we can see that channel met up here at our bottom and now we've bounced off of that bad boy right uh, now in terms of the direction of Bitcoin and we have to remember it's a weekend okay so anything can happen obviously uh, and as I said I do expect to return back to that CME area by the end of the weekend right not to just bang in shorts right now because uh, sometimes we will have gaps that last multiple weeks right uh, so you don't want to bang in a leverage short and get liquidated here especially 
especially in a bull market, right? Uh, and it's kind of uh, kind of hard to say that when we just did that, but uh, that was. Um, that was a that was a bot, right? That was the algorithm, and, and we trust that algorithm over longer periods of times, right? I did say in the Telegram chat, guys, that this is a bad short, um, and you should not risk much on it. I was hoping for a long more than anything, and uh, that just didn't happen this time. And even if it was a long, it would have got stopped out. So uh, we were actually saved from a stop out up here, and and we uh, we just got one stop out instead of like two, potentially three, uh, where we could have had uh, a bit further back as well, right? Uh, so. Uh, with that kind of justified and everything going on there, we can see that our ATR band is actually down to 19,500 now, which is interesting because if we have this channel here, uh, it could, if we do break towards the upside with 18... 850 that kind of area right and it looks good then the measure move would bring us above this ATR band uh, The only issue is that these are facing down for quite some time now, okay um, On the way up here. We rarely had any downwards facing uh, ATR bands as you can see right there were very short periods of time uh, Where the ATR bands were down for this run up right this kind of 80% run up uh, So now the fact that these are pointing down so uh, Aggressively here. We're gonna need some nice moves here to get above it and then right ride it back up to that next high, okay? Uh, and in terms of this bigger channel now, I would say be careful with it just because uh, it is gonna get too wide here uh, to the point where it doesn't really, like it's not as correlative as it was, right? Uh, so yes, it still has weights. Yes, this measure move is still good to go, but because it's wider, uh, now, right, then we're gonna have to make this measure move bigger. So if we did uh, somehow climb through up to 21.5 here, then we're gonna have a big girthy measure move from 21.5 if we break up above there, right, um, like we've been talking about for the past week, uh, that would bring us up to 25, potentially 26,000 if we got up there. That's the kind of bullish scenario here for the short term. Um, over this weekend, I would typically just expect uh, to, to range up to 18.8 around this area here. Uh, so between here and then coming back down, having another swipe down to this bottom side here. And we can still dump. We can still dump if we get down to this bottom side below 18K again, right? And there's nothing to say that we can't do that yet, especially with there potentially being a CME gap around that point again, okay? In terms of this CME gap around here, uh, I did actually uh, say the other day that that's been filled and I still stand by that. I would say that's been filled. Um, in terms of right now, bullish or bearish, we're kind of in the middle. We're being held back by our 200 EMA. Uh, we're being held up by our 10 simple. If we lose this 10 simple, it's probably going to be sideways and down, I would say. Uh, so probably something like this and then coming down over the weekend, right? Uh, but there's lots of time here. Uh, we can chill here, okay? And it is unfortunate we didn't get in along here, but guys, we're not taking bad longs. And uh, you can see here, as soon as this candle ended, if we had taken this long, uh, we'd pretty much be at break even anyway, right? Uh, 18,340, uh, and then we'd, we'd only be at 18,4, okay? And that's not a big move. That's not, let me just measure out the percentages for those of you guys that are skeptical here, right? Uh, the percentage here for what we would have made is a 0.04%, which barely covers your feeds, especially if you're on leverage. So this is why we didn't get in this trade, okay? Uh, what I was hoping for was more of a, a, a curl up over time time here and potentially I mean it was looking more like we could get rejected but we did get this uh, ridiculous v-shaped recovery here right I was hoping more for kind of like a, a chilled out zone here a grind up a slow grind up and then a healthy ascent right uh, in terms of the, the big game the, the big picture here okay uh, we are fine okay we barely lost any money in this one okay we are chilling we have a lot of money in cash waiting to get in I'm okay getting in here or I'm okay getting in at 21k it doesn't really matter to me because uh, I believe that Bitcoin will run pretty high this time when we do eventually crack that kind of egg up here right uh, when we do get there we break through that barrier that's going to be it probably for Bitcoin and we do go parallel Parabolic for there, in my opinion. Okay, so uh, as of right now, we are chilling. Uh, what is 10% when we can make 10x over the next year from simply hodling and and maybe and potentially a lot more than that from trading the swings as well as hodling, right? So we have a lot of time here to chill. OK, uh, and if we do come down here and we do break these towards the downside with these measure moves down to kind of 16.4 and we'll get to this in a minute, right? 16.4 uh, uh, and then 14.7, that kind of 15, 16 area, which I am still expecting to happen, guys. This is still flaccid price action. This is not bullish yet. OK, we are still just chilling here. You can see this. It's pretty obvious stuff coming through, right? Uh, so uh, the fact that we've gone up for so long here like this and now we're going sideways, you can expect us to potentially go down here uh, if the cards are 
played correctly, okay? Um, and it just would make sense, in my opinion, to do that. Um, so what we're looking for in terms of a break towards the downside here, and again, weekend, be careful, uh, potentially another trap here around where this ATR band is, and we'll get to that when we get to the longer term. Um, but you can tell I'm speaking pretty fast right now because I'm trying to get through everything, and we are 10 minutes in right now, we're still in the short term. So uh, yeah, with this, with this, 17.8 uh, is pretty much where we're looking for that break. But if you're looking for better confirmations here, I would just say 17.5. Basically, watch this ATR band. If you have the WAD machine, this ATR band is what you need to be looking at um, because we could get something like this where we get rejected from it. Uh, rejected, rejected up towards the upside, right? Um, and uh, on the other hand, if we do get a downwards trend uh, kind of opposite to this, right, we can get a nice trade in. So uh, as long as we're maintaining below that line, then I would expect these measure moves to play out, potentially 16.3, uh, potentially even more than that, initiating measure moves down to 15,000, that kind of area, okay? So yes, um, there is still hope for a very, very nice entry here. I'm not worried, we've got all the time in the world, and it's really, uh, we could go sideways for the next month and then dump still, okay, guys? As long as we're below 20K, I'm, st I'm expecting a dump, f to be honest, that's it. Like, I am expecting a dump if we're below 20K. Um, and then once that dump happens, and I'm not talking about 10%, I'm talking about big, beefy, chicken moon nugget dumps all over you here. Where is she? Where is she at? Where is she? You know who I'm looking for. Big, girthy, megalodonithic dumps all over you here on a savage Saturday. Look at this. Big Meg show in her face. Where you at, girl? <laughs> right. Um, three hour here. Three hour coming through. And it's important, guys, for you to know uh, my perspective here, right? Yes, we took a little loss here, okay? We took a little loss. It's not a problem, okay? As I said, 1% of your account, you lost like you lost like 0.025% of your account, or whatever, right? It's 0.25% of your account. Not a problem, okay? Um, and it's important here, guys, when you take a loss that you don't lose your mindset, you keep your clarity, and as well as that, keeping your positivity is so key here, right? Uh, and I did just want to clarify that before continuing. Uh, as well as that, guys, um, yeah, thank you to you guys. Wait, that's not the right picture. That's not the right picture at all. The picture changed. What happened there? We did have a picture. Okay, well, thanks to all the supporters, guys. We've, the picture's changed for some reason. I haven't changed anything, but the picture's changed. Um, there, there are more people on there, but yeah, thanks to the supporters. Do appreciate it. Not needed, not necessary. No return on that investment, but it is equivalent of you, like, buying me a coffee or a beer or something, so I do appreciate that. Uh, and, uh, I mean, free beer is, is fun, right? It's good times. <laughs> right? A three-hour hit. Predictions. This is actually looking a bit more interesting, okay? Uh, simply because um, we do have strange kind of formation here I would say uh, typically quite bearish but breaking out towards the upside that measure move uh, if there was one here uh, is basically and this is kind of rough drawn but is, is basically close to playing out right I would expect potentially as high as 18.8 today but saying that we could also just be trapping this 55 before continuation down okay uh, Bitcoin loves to trap the 55 you can see this green here right trap there right trap trap just dirty girthy traps all over this one wasn't a trap, but um, I mean, trappy area for sure. Uh, here, here, they love to mess around with this 55 on all time frames, really. Okay, uh, so when we are talking about potentially breaking over or below 55s here, this is the this is the moving average I would say is trapped the most with Bitcoin because so many average or newbie traders look at the 55 and say, hey, we're above the 55, I'm going to take a long, or hey, I'm below 55, I'm going to 100x cross leverage, short it, straight to the ground. No, okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, just look how many times we trap this bad boy. You've got to be cautious and careful with this. You've got to be gentle, but very firm indeed. Very firm indeed. I want to find, uh, if you guys have seen that movie, it's called The Boat That Rocked. Um, I'm going to find some gifts because I love that movie. It's such a good food. But anyway, to, to more important points here, to po more important points, if we are to measure something out here, okay, uh, we've obviously just measured out that, that thing, but it's kind of played out already, I would say, um, and if we do put that down as a trap below here, and this is kind of uh, dangerous to do, but if we do that, and then we do break over this in the next uh, two days or so, the measure move for that from one side to the other, if we do just take this down as a trap, because let's be honest, at the end of the day, it was, okay, dump down, 
dump straight back up engulfing candle and then respecting that initial support here that we respected before so a measure move from here to here is not uh, like illegal or anything like that and if we do break over and maintain above there potentially as high as 19,000 does make sense as well right uh, and if that does happen guys we can then start talking about this trend line holding for a bit longer and if that trend line holds for a bit longer we can measure out we can measure out here just kind of getting rid of these traps a little bit, right? Uh, we can measure out a seriously girthy ascending triangle here, uh, and the measure move for that, let's say we just play out this, okay? Um, let's just say we play this out, bang it all the way, and then bang, okay? What do we see here coming up to 20,700 again? Also lining up with the top side of this. So yes, there is potential measure moves up here, but the areas we are really watching here for this to continue up is obviously if we break over this, and this is gonna be weekend time, so we can really mess around here and, and not really have any decent data here because I don't trust the weekends. Doesn't make sense to, uh, it, it's just, it's a weekday thing, okay guys? Uh, but, but saying that, if we do break over basically 19.4, then I would expect us to get as high as 20,600, which is a potential for a nice trade there, to say the least here, right? Uh, we do also have, uh, yeah, I mean, that's a 7% trade, that's pretty nice, but it depends if we continue up here or we just slam it down. Uh, a lot of on-chain stuff is being very, very, very bullish right now, okay? Uh, lots of people, institutions, everyone is jumping on that train uh, to, to wherever Bitcoin will land if it breaks 100k, right? I'm still being cautious here, uh, and the reason why is uh, the last, I want to say, five times this happened in Bitcoin's history where sentiment was this bullish, we've had a dump 100% of the time, big dump, 20% plus, okay? Uh, and those times where that happens is uh, where we get those big 25% pullbacks. So when everyone's this bullish, okay, and when Bitcoin is this flaccid like it is now, okay, uh, then those big dumps are expected, okay? And uh, guys, this isn't the first time everyone's been this bullish, okay? Uh, we're talking about 14K, we were talking about this at 8K on that run and we had a girthy dump, okay? Every time everyone gets this bullish, we get a big dump, okay? And I'm saying that, just because it's true, <laughs> just because it's true, right? <laughs> um, so I wouldn't expect anything different here, and if, there, if it is different, we are still here prepared to play this level by level, right? As I said here, we can, uh, let's do some long term first, and then we'll get onto that. Um, but yeah, the, the overall synapsis or, or whatever you want to say here for the mid term here is, yes, if we continue up, there are measure moves up to 19.1 uh, and then up to 20,800 here. And that would uh, align with some stuff as well, right? If we got up here uh, and we got to the top side of this, we would be above our ATR band and that could initiate another run here uh, like we had before uh, up from that. And uh, I mean, that's a, that's a viable scenario here. Again, guys, I am bullish on Bitcoin. I am really bullish on Bitcoin right at, the, at the moment, but until we get over 20,000, uh, and really 21K at this point, uh, I'm not really interested in overextending here, right? If, if, if I get in along and then we dump to, to 12K, which is a possibility, obviously that's an extreme version. I wouldn't expect it to get below 15K, to be honest, guys. But uh, if, if that happens, then it's gonna be like, oh, well, I, I just missed out on a nice 30% Bitcoin buy more, right? And uh, then I would expect to go up from there. So yes, uh, we are looking for longs. Yes, we are bullish, okay? Everything does point to the sky right now, but in the mid and short term here, I do expect us to come down to 15.7 at some point, okay? Um, whether we do or don't, it doesn't matter, okay? Because if we get above here, we get in a long, we bang it up, potentially up to 30K, right? Uh, we get down here, we get in a long, we bang it up, we make more money. So uh, whatever happens in the middle here, it's just kind of, it's just child's play. It's just, it doesn't really matter, right? It's, it's, it's whatever at the end of the day. So, um, yeah, we can analyze this and trade this all we want, but if we're looking for the next big girthy move here, um, I mean, they're aligned out here, but I mean, the, what we're really looking for is a nice entry for a big run up. Um, and well, this isn't enough for me. And we'll, we'll, we'll get to the, the long term in a minute where we should have potentially entered a long round here, but we didn't get low enough, right? I was looking for, and you can see my alert here, right? I was looking for 17.5, a wick through there, and then using that momentum uh, from book maps as well here, if I can, uh, if I can uh, show you a little book mappy here before we continue, uh, where are we at? 
Where are we at? There we go, yeah. Boom. Okay, so what can we see here? Oh, this is actually tiny. <laughs> but you can still see what I'm talking about. So, um, yeah, um, what can we see here? 17.5. I was hoping for basically some violation of that zone. Uh, instead, it's basically just just got down there a little bit and not not continuing, right? Uh, so I was looking for a long around 17.5. We didn't get low enough, uh, and then we just bounced up. So typically, I am expecting another wave down there to test it one more time, right? Uh, orders are put in to be filled, and I would expect that to be filled. That is not uh, a thou shall not pass wall, in my opinion, okay? Uh, a thou shall not pass wall is kind of like 700 Bitcoin plus, I would say, over like a couple hundred bucks or, or uh, 300 bucks span, right? Um, this in itself, in my opinion, is is more of a, a, a trying to fill my long uh, wall, okay? So, yes, a 17.5 I would expect to, to, to attack at some point, and that will be an area where I'm definitely eyeing up a long, depending on how it goes, okay? Um, so moving on to the long term here, if I can just get rid of old Bookie. Where you at, Bookie? Come on, mate. There we go. Cool. So, um, yeah. At the end of the day, guys, we're here for that sprinkle of a nice entry. Why is... That's not, that's not animating. Hello? It's not animating. Oh, I should animate. Oh, well. I guess all my memes have just destroyed themselves somehow. Let's just talk about Bitcoin, okay? <laughs> Let's just talk about Bitcoin. It's a weekend. We're chilling, as we talked about. There's a lot of stuff to go through here. We're already 20 minutes in. So, uh, long term here, I do expect to bounce potentially up to as high as 19,000 as we talked about. But overall, I'm, expect I'm expecting a big pattern to form here uh, over the next month, right? So we've got half the month left. And then when we get into January here, uh, I expect this to kind of be played out, whatever happens. So whether we come down or whether we're, we finish up here, right? Uh, I expect a big move around January and that's going to be my next big long, okay? Um, so if we get a huge dump in January, then yeah, I'll be looking for longs uh, when we come down, obviously. But um, if, we, if we start breaking out towards the upside, uh, like 20k plus in January, then I'm going to be getting a big, big order in. And then that big order is probably going to be carried up to probably 26k, I would say, right? That would be my prediction there for the long term. Um, in terms of patterns here, not really much to talk about just yet. If we do find a bottom here, which I don't expect to happen just yet, uh, if we do find a bottom um, and we do really just push this up, then uh, not a problem, okay? Not a problem at all, because we're going to be looking for that next big measure move, right? And uh, whether that's towards the downside, there's big money to be made, or whether that's towards the upside here, uh, where... And let me just use this new trading view tool here. Oh, look at this. <laughs> is that, it's a little highlighter. That's beautiful, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I'm going to use this a bit more. That's nice. Uh, so, yeah. I can make some beautiful paintings, some art with this, I think. But yeah, if we can get into this zone, fantastic stuff here, right? Um, and and that's going to be it, right? That will be it for Bitcoin starting a seriously parabolic run. I do expect it to be aggressive from there, so I will be taking a bit more of an aggressive position, right? Obviously, the risk reward is good. If we if we come down below that, that 20k zone again, we can hit a stop loss or whatever. Not a problem, okay? Uh, but oh, this these is really cool. I like this. I like this. It's really cool, okay? I'm just, <laughs> just saying it. My inner artist is loving it. Uh, maybe I'll draw something in a minute. But anyway, <laughs> anyway here, let's bring it up because we've got this pretty much down. We know what we're doing. The plan is being set, okay? We are ready, uh, and now we're just kind of waiting to see what's going to happen here. In terms of this right now, as what we can see with our level-by-level level stuff, we didn't get low enough for me to take along here, right? And then we barted up. Uh, too much to take along here and that does happen in these sideways areas and the reason why we don't take longs here because it's more likely when that happens to get reversed okay so uh, right here for example uh, this was not low enough to take along uh, and if we did take along here there's a, there's quite a high chance that we continue down here right uh, but at the same time um, at the same time taking along up here for example after a BART on an hourly here right this one I'm talking about um, then it's quite likely that we come down uh, and just reverse that anyway, right? We're pretty much at entry anyway for that position if we took it. So as of right now, I am just chilling, waiting, watching, uh, and hoping that we can get down into the 17 kind of, uh, what are we at here? 17.5 area, right? Have a little test on that. Uh, just come down here, test it a little bit, and then a healthy curve up, get in along, take profit on all of these lines coming up, and then we're good, right? 
Um, I, I guess some of my some of the people uh, I've been talking to and, and I rent this indicator out to didn't take this long either right no one I know took this long and uh, the reason I didn't is because well for the same reasons they didn't right where excuse me where um where they're basically just saying uh, it's, it's not confirmed enough right and um, we'll see we'll see how this goes we'll see if we do get a higher high here but it depends it really depends on the price action i would just say just be careful in this area for sure right weekend times um can often be very dangerous okay uh so yeah we can easily this weekend come down here do do a little bit of snaky snake and then uh start the next week uh with some potential girthy gains to be had right um and it might be frustrating for you guys to, to not see me in trades all the time but this is normal okay this is fine um, we're here looking for the best possible scenario and then we make that money. We only need that scenario every maybe four times a year. You could get that some of the best traders I know, actually you know, the best traders I know will take four investment positions every year. Okay? Four. Four. So you when you're waiting on on a five minute <laughs> <laughs> and this isn't like all of you, probably not even most of you guys, but uh, when you're waiting on a five minute for that next big trade, um, you're wasting a lot of time, really, and you're wasting a lot of energy uh, trying to decide where it's going to go, because the lower down you go, the more random it is, right? So when we're looking at this and we're looking on a higher time frame, we're playing this level by level, and we're looking for that perfect position, um, it's okay to wait for a little bit. It really, really is, and, uh, and just wait for that position to come to you, right? So... Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the point there. <laughs> that's pretty much the point. But if we're looking at our, um, our, what's this, what's this, the bull market barrier, right? If you are new, bull market barrier is a really, really good tool. Uh, just type it in here, bull market barrier, right? And this will be good for an investment uh, strategy here, not financial advice, you're liable for your own trades, all of that good stuff. But what the bull market barrier does is essentially it it's a good gauge for uh, tops and bottoms here throughout Bitcoin's history. And I've got the golden ratio in here because I was doing some uh, some studying on uh, on the potential future setups here we can talk about. And this isn't my indicator. I'm just thinking about making something similar. Um, and it won't be exactly the same as this, but you can see here that, that there are some good longs and shorts here that, that were taken based on this, right? So uh, I'm looking at this now thinking, okay, uh, we're quite near the top potentially. Um, there might be a wave up here, but overall, coming into a bull market, uh, where I should be looking for for the next longs kind of thing would be on the bull market barrier. Or if we crash down and have a bear market, uh, then wherever these lower rings are, or wherever the uh, the bottom of this round of blue boxes are. So again, just honing up on all the tools here, uh, getting ready for this next bull market cycle here, as we are kind of in the midst of it. But as we do pull back eventually to this bull market barrier, which I do expect to do, uh, whether it is uh, coming into like mid January, right, uh, and and pulling back to that. Um, is is whatever, right? Because we're going to be here looking for longs, a level by level stuff here, level by level stuff here, and level by level stuff here. So there's there's endless scenarios where we can make money. It's not a problem, and it's okay to take a little loss on a smaller, uh, high risk strategy with a tiny amount of your account when you're looking for those big investment longs uh, throughout the year, right? We're talking about even in these sideways areas, as we talked about DCA strategies here. I haven't actually explained this in a while, so I'll explain it now. But uh, if you if you're just doing DCA strategies here when we are in a downtrend like this right um, what you can do here let's say you have three entries bap bap okay cool and then we come down uh, and then your average entries uh, let's say 7k right even after all this playing out and coming up and sitting underwater for a bit okay your average entry would be a 7 or 8k right we'll just say here right being the average entry and then bringing it up to the bull market barrier here that's a 30% gain girth done okay and that's over three months Right, and that's only a recent example. You guys know I took a few longs here, right? I took a long here, uh, I took a long here, right? Um, and I took a long somewhere around here as well. No, it was here, it was here, yeah. It was here, I took a long, and then uh, played it all the way up, and then we didn't take this long. We didn't take this long because it wasn't good enough, wasn't low enough, uh, and this was a weekend as well, so we didn't take that. So, uh, yeah, as of right now, it's looking interesting, uh, and if we do get into the next zone, yeah, I'll be taking it along all the way up. There's a simple, bare, basic strategy here, okay? Uh, and if we go down to this level, I'll be taking it along, looking for that, right? So, 
yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to say there. But if you are looking, if you are looking at on on even further back here, uh, any DCA strategy here, and then just making sure you've got a nice profit margin back up to the bull market barrier in this kind of area, then yeah, you're going to make serious girthy gains all over you on a Saturday, right? On a wacky wiki weekend, right? Uh, if we are in an uptrend such as this, right, then uh, what you can do here is potentially uh, get in entries around the bull market barrier and then DCA take profits all the way up and then always expect to return back to this bull market barrier, right? So doing the opposite here when we're in the opposite side. So when we get back to this bull market barrier, uh, for example here, if, we, if we're doing it like cyclically, <laughs> if that's a word, right, um, then then uh, yeah, potential here to come up. We just take profit in each one of these blue box zones, looking for the girthy gains, and then as as we return back to the bull market barrier, we reload every time, right? You can see this. So lots of money to be made here. No stress, no hassle. We're looking for like four investment longs a year. We've already made seriously girthy gains this year. It's not a problem. And that was mainly sideways, this, this area where we were taking trades. So uh, imagine what we can do when we do get that uh, inevitable ultimate pull back here, uh, back to 15k around that zone, right? Um, that is going to be some serious girthy gains if it plays out that way, okay? If it doesn't, then we do just go stratospheric from here. We play it level by level anyway, uh, and eventually this thing will catch us up anyway for a pullback, so it's not a problem, okay? Um, in terms of this, <laughs> this is the, the, main, the main act for the show here, as you can see. This is what I like to call the nuke chart. It's based on fib circles. Let me just explain how these fib circles are drawn and then just what correlations uh, are surrounding them, okay? So we're on a log chart here. Uh, the way you would draw this, and we're gonna focus on this yellow ring here, right? Uh, the way you would draw this is from the top of the moving average here, right? So uh, SMA uh, 20, yeah, SMA 20 there, top of the moving average. And then uh, this is obviously where our 20K top was. And then we come down here to where the bottom of are moving averages on the bear market here down at 3k and then we drag that ring all the way down from top to bottom okay and what that does that makes this ring uh, not just one ring but multiple rings uh, not infinitely as you can see but multiple rings here are coming through throughout the cycle okay and now we're coming towards this next ring here in January okay so if we are looking at uh, correlations, okay, catalytic events here based on what we've just talked about. And obviously all these other rings are, are, are for other moving averages as well. The thinner rings are from the 14k run, okay, uh, but they're not as valuable, I would say. Uh, in terms of this yellow ring though, big pump, big girthy pump here. And I said when we were down at 10k, I said if we cross this ring, there's potential for a nice pump here. But I wasn't expecting, honestly, I wasn't expecting this <laughs> this big of a pump. This is ridiculous. I was expecting to get stopped around 15k and then come down, breathing room to 12k and then come back up, right? Instead, we've just banged it. Um, we're continuing to bang it apparently, um, which is unheard of really. But I mean, can't hate it. Can't hate it, just look for a, for a way to play it, right? So with that, the next ring here, if we were to just continue this as ascent here a little bit longer, and it, let's say we do get to 20K around the 9th of January here, right? Um, this would be a good area, I would say, for a potential uh, long if we can break over or a short if we break down, okay? So looking at this in the past, big pump, big pump, um, little pump. There we go, big pump there. Uh, we've got big pump there, beautiful stuff. Uh, and then on the downside here, after a blow off top here, uh, what we can see is typically when we cross the ring, uh, we do get some more downward side. This one specifically is looking like a, a good one where we had the dump uh, from 6K, right? So just good correlative points here based on this yellow ring. So uh, I would just expect here, and I may just delete everything else uh, and keep the yellow ring. I haven't decided yet. Um, but coming into the end of this cycle here, where these rings do finally end here, uh, we could potentially get up to like 50, 50K, something like that, I would say, if, if we continue. Um, and that would be kind of brutal, but what can you do? Um, and yeah, we... we we could still dump, we could still dump here. So depending on what happens with this run, however high we get here, then we, we know that we can draw these rings again for the next cycle and have a pretty good advantage coming forward here, right? Obviously I wouldn't say to trade this blindly, this is quite hypothetical, unheard of stuff. Um, 
but uh, as an analyst myself, as a pro trader myself, I can see the correlations, I can see it working, and I will be looking to use this in the future, especially in future cycles. I'm talking years down the line here. I'm not talking like uh, in the next week or something, right? I'm talking the next time we get a big blow off top, whether it's 200K or whatever, right? Uh, I'm saying we can then draw a ring on the next bear market, right? Uh, where is the rings actually? Where are we saying? What are we saying here, right? So let's say we hit 200K here. Is this two mil or 200K? It's 200, this two mil. Okay, uh, let's, let's just say, let's just say 200K, right? Um, and then what we could do here as that moving average comes up and down, uh, we can then draw another ring there and then from that point, uh, know roughly what's going to happen, okay? Uh, and we can use that like we've done this time for those next potential waves up here like we've done here. So yeah, I mean, the future is bright. We're planning even years, five years, 10 years into the future here with our potential uh, longs and trades here. And obviously it's hard to predict all of, all of that that could happen. Maybe we will all be trading in VR by then, who knows? But uh, as of this and as a strategy, this is uh, how I'm going about this for now, okay? In terms of a summary, as we end the video here, uh, I will just say, look in, look in, I don't want to say bullish. It is it is fairly bullish, okay? But this this is not fun price action and this is not something I would like to trade personally, okay? What I was looking for is up, down, retest, go forward, right? Instead, we had up, sideways, more up and <laughs> sideways, right? That's not fun, that's not healthy, that's not really something I'm looking to trade anyway, right? So whether we do come up here, test uh, 19K, not a problem, uh, or whether we do come down here, test the 17.8 again, uh, and then potentially wick into our blue box zone here as a summary, right? Uh, if we can get into this blue box zone and then it looks like it's turning around healthily, then yeah, uh, I will be looking for a long there. And obviously this is gonna come up over time, so 17.5 uh, over the end of the weekend here, potentially uh, we're looking at, oh no, that's, uh, yeah, if we're looking at the 14th here, uh, yeah, 17.6 probably by Monday. So yeah, a wick down to 17.6 on Monday would not surprise me at all. Uh, and that would be a good time to get in long, to say the least. But this in itself was not low enough for me, uh, just in summary there, right? In terms of the breakout machine summary here before we leave, uh, it is compressing here, volume dropping, volatility dropping. Uh, but in terms of momentum, we are outside our threshold. So you can see these two white lines here. I'm going to change the color of these actually. We're going to change them to dark blue. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. That's a nice dark blue there. That's, that's nice it's deep sea blue. <laughs> but yeah, because we're out of the zone, we're no longer due. If we do come down here with some downwards momentum here coming into the weekend, uh, we could potentially get another signal here before Monday, and that could initiate potentially a good entry for a long. Hopefully it's a long. Hopefully it's a long. But um, I mean, what we can expect to happen here with this is if we do finish up this wave, if we do come down here, uh, then the next long here could line line up here with the volume and then uh, volatility decreasing as well. And then bap, 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 make the girthy gains, getting a fatty long to 20K and then serious girth all over you. None of this happy meal stuff here, guys. We're talking about big, beefy chicken nugget gains all over you here on a weekend. That's that's it. That's the video guys. That's the summary. I will see you in the next one tomorrow in which I will be very hungover, so you're going to have to bear with me. But I mean, you got to have fun. <laughs> you got to have fun. Life lessons with Hamilton. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video guys. Peace out. Thank you for liking the video if you have. Hit the subscribe button. I do this every single day and peace out. Goodbye from Bitcoin Beats.